dragon! Oh, oh, we got something, we got something! Alright, when you connect these batteries, you want to make sure your negative and your positive are in the right spot. Here's the negative. Sometimes Volkswagen negative wires are brown or even sometimes red. So yeah, observe that. The battery for ground cable is actually attached to the floor pan typically. And then the positive one is attached to the starter. It also goes off to the voltage regulator that way. So, so before we touch it, see if we make spark. No spark. Alright, put it right on there. That way we know there's no unusual shorts or any weirdness. Tight. It's been on there a million years, so I wouldn't be surprised. The car's been sitting about 30 years approximately. Oh, you got it. All right. What you smell? Not much anything. Not much anything? Let's see what you got here. Yeah, a little bit of a kind of a plasticky. No, not really much anything. Kind of a plasticky smell, like gas cap. Not really like gas or anything, like so. Cap. Yeah, I, I think uh, that might actually be a clean clean tank. We'll throw some gas in and just see what happens. Hopefully there's no leaks anywhere. Go ahead and put that key on there and turn it to the on position without trying to start it. We're looking for lights on the dashboard. I see the uh, emergency uh, safety belt light is on. What do you see on the gauges there? Just one little red light right there. Just one red light? Is there a symbol next to it? Like a G or it's something? A G. It is a G. Okay, it's a generator light. Do you see the oil light on? We do want to see an oil light on because we're not going to try to start the engine if we don't know what the oil pressure thing is going to be doing. Well, we're going to have to figure that out in a second. Opened. There you go. <laughs> There's our dirty, filthy engine. Okay, make sure our oil connector is connected on here because we were getting oil light problems. Might have something to do with this being rusty, crusty, dirty, or otherwise. Okay, there's a dipstick in there. Pull that dipstick up and let's see what that oil level is. What you see on there? It's full. Oop, without tipping it back because it's gonna roll up. It's uh, I don't even see the groove on it, which is good. That means it's covered with oil. Okay, so there should be enough oil in there. Try not to push leaves and crud back in there. That's that's a mess. We're gonna have to clean this thing up before we try to crank it over. But it does have oil. That's a good sign. Um, we do know the engine was free because we can we can turn this. I'm using my bad hand right now. I got a little bit of tennis elbow on this side. <laughs> I'm having trouble with grip, but anyway, that's a good sign. The thing does crank over. Let's turn the key in the on position to see if the oil light comes on now since we just started tweaking it. Nope, still no oil light. Nope. Okay, we'll have to come back to that. Um, go ahead and blip the key just a little bit and just see if it tries to crank. Good, stop, stop. Okay, that's a good sign. Things are cranking. Okay, is the key in the on position right now? Yes. Good, okay. That means we should have power on this side of the coil. And if we touch ground, we have a test light coming on. That's good, so there is power at the coil. And if we touch the oil, yep, okay, the oil sender is telling us that we have light. That's good. And it's not grounding out from that circuit. These are good things. It looks like this is just really dirty and corroded. Maybe I should even just try to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper before we proceed. You know what, let's go ahead and do that. That's a good idea. Yep. It came on? It's on. Oh, fantastic. All right, well we have an oil light. That is good news. See that right there, fantastic. Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Raj. I'm your host, the Duckman. We're back today with my 1972 Super Beetle. And wouldn't you know that some people think that this is not a Super Beetle because it has a flat windshield. Anyway, we'll get to that in another video, but 
This thing has been sitting for about 30 years. That's right, it's been sitting since around 1990 in this guy's yard. The driver's side was the side close to the house, which is why it has less rust. The side where B is on was the nasty, rusty, yucky side. And uh, that's the side it was exposed to the weather. Now this, of course, is Dina Queen. And I failed to introduce you in the beginning of the video, and I'm very sorry. They know who I am. <laughs> they know who she is. And if you want to know better about who she is, hit her up on her Patreon. That's right, or her Instagram or her YouTube. Show her some love. Find it up on duckshit.net. Now today we're going to try to fire this thing up and see if we can get it to run. Uh, <laughs> you never can tell what you're going to expect. The good thing is the engine does turn over freely, but from here on out it's a matter of just figuring it out and seeing what we can find along the way. So here's hoping. You guys, you're going to take the ride with us. We'll see what happens. Anyways, like you, like you, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. We'll be back right after the intro. All right, I see we got our double lights there up on the dashboard. The key is still in there. Go ahead and crank it and just hold the key to the crank position and see if we can get those lights to go out, or at least the oil light anyway. Nope, you didn't hold it, you let go. Crank it and hold it. And hold it there. You let go. No, I'm still in there. Are you? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, we might have some loose wires someplace else. Um, go ahead and, yep, let go. Looked like the oil light was trying to go out. Um, go ahead and crank it again. Holding. And the oil light out. went out. Good. Stop. Okay, that's a good sign. That means we're getting oil pressure. Okay. We believe this engine to be good because when we check that end play on this thing, the end play is good. So I think this engine has just been parked for a long time, probably cared for properly, and then just neglected for the last 30 years. Okay. But, uh... We should change the oil in it before we go any further. We're probably going to catch shit for it because we haven't done that. But we're going to try to crank this thing over anyway because guess what? CT Moog did it. And if CT Moog did it, then it's good enough for me. So guys, subscribe to CT Moog. He's got a bus he's working on and a few other things. You need to see what he's doing. So head on up. There's a link down in the video description. We're probably going to mention him a few times in this video. But uh, so far, so good. This is, this is great. Okay, let's come on back to the back of the car. <laughs> All right, get all the leaves and things out of there. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna pull that air cleaner off of there. Let's see what you got. At the top, right? Yep, it's right on the top. Pull that, the whole thing. Grab the entire unit, all the way to the right. That long tube, yeah, that. Grab it, and grab the left side of it, and go straight up. Shimmy it, straight up. Should, should come out pretty easy, there you go. Yeah, you got it. Lay it on top of the trash can over there. Yeah, pull that lid off of there and see what we got inside of it. Everybody in the neighborhood's being really loud today, so sorry guys if you hear a lot of activity in the background. All right, looks like it's actually pretty clean. There's a little oil in it, which it's supposed to have, but it's not as much as is supposed to be in there. But uh, the fact is, there's not a whole bunch of debris blowing around in there, which is a good thing. Yeah, I'm not too worried about trying to run it with that on there. It'd be better if we had a proper air cleaner, but I think that's pretty good. I don't see any junk in there either. Okay, we can put that back on the car, but before we do that, let's check down inside the carburetor and make sure we don't see any junk in there. I don't know if the choke is working or not. It does have a wire on it, but I don't see any obvious junk in there like twigs, sticks, large bugs, mice. My hopes and dreams. Fairy godmothers. Yeah. <laughs> parents approval. Uh-oh. I think it might fire if it gets some gas. All right, go ahead and turn it on. And crank them over and hold it until I say release. What happened? What do you mean? I didn't release it. Oh, okay. That's another story. <laughs> okay. All right, turn it off. Off. Okay. 
Let me go ahead and throw a little juice in there. I think it might fire if it gets some gas. Just a splash is all you need and don't spill it on the outside because if something overheats or backfires, you could have an engine fire. <laughs> All right, go ahead and crank them over. All right, nothing, turn them off. I think it should have fired a little bit or something. Let's see if we can get us some spark here. This is one of those reasons you don't wanna have any gas that's loose here, because if there's gas in the bout, it'll cause a fire. Let's see, put this someplace here. All right, crank them. Got no spark, no spark at all. Okay, shut them down. So, well, the distributor cap here is coming apart. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a problem. We're going to figure that out. Let me get a little closer in here so you guys can see. The reason why the cap was coming loose is because the rear clip wasn't even on it properly. Pull the rotor out here. Rotor actually looks pretty good. Inside of the cap looks pretty good too. He should be serviceable. Okay, do this. Turn the key on, but do not crank it. It's on. All right, leave it right that way. Do not touch anything. No touching. Okay, I'm not manually getting a spark either. Check some of the wiring back here. It looked like it was loose. Still no spark. Manually move the points. Oh, now we got a spark. Okay, it looks like the points are closed up. All right. Let's go ahead and gap them properly. Do not turn that key. No touching. It's in the on position. I All right, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Turn it off now. Off. And good, and hands off of everything. No touching. All right. It looks like the points are closed up, so what we're going to do is we're going to regap these points. I don't know if the timing on here is any good. By the way, I'm just using a business card because my feeler gauges are MIA right now. But a business card is usually enough to do it. Alright, now I see they're open. This is good. Before we do anything else, I'm just going to clean the contacts in there with a little bit of sandpaper. Off? Yes, leave it off. I will turn it off. Turn it off, hands off everything. Okay. I get in here and I'm just going to... Some people say don't use sandpaper in this because it leaves a little bit of debris behind. I don't worry about that too much. Because if points, they go bad, I've just replaced them. Being these are 30 year old points, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> All right. Do this now. Turn the key on and go ahead and, and crank it. Okay. So you tell me to release? Correct. All right, stop. We got spark. That's good. Good news. And I smell bad gas too, so <laughs> whatever is um, blowing through the system is finally starting to come out. All right, let's put this rotor back on. Yes, leave everything off and hands off. All right, pull that back clip back on. The front clip back on. I hope this is timed right. Again, I have not checked the timing on this thing. Hell, I don't even know if the, the gap on the points is right because I just used a business card. <laughs> All right, we've already juiced it. I'm going to juice it again because I think that uh, it's blown through whatever I put in there. Oops, that's a lot. Okay, I just flooded the shit out of it. <laughs> that was a mistake. Okay. <laughs> Alright, you guys. I did put some two-stroke down in the carburetor. That was what I put in there. It's from my weed whacker. That's the same thing as what we poured in the gas tank. I figure a little top-end lube is better than none. Although the engine didn't appear to be stuck at all. After sitting that many years, it was probably just a good idea. Now, don't be surprised if you see smoke come out because that's why. There's oil and gas. <laughs> Alright, I got a feeling this is going to fire. 
Go ahead and turn that key. Let's see what happens. And crank. On? Yes. Oh, oh, we got something. We got something. Yes. Oh, it's running. Go ahead, crank him again. Ooh, that stinks. There's a lot of crud sitting in this system. Nothing. Nothing? All right, turn it off, give it a break for a second. Okay. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit here. There's so much smoke came out of it, it's gonna be really cool when this uh, thing finally lights off the way it should. All right, go ahead and turn them on. He's on. Try to crank them. Oh. Release and then try again. Stop it. I think I need to juice it again. Good. Yeah, I think it burned up whatever was in there. I don't know if it's pumping any fuel from the gas tank. It may not be. Just a little bit in here. I hear somebody running a boat engine in the background. So if you guys hear that loud revving, that's a sounds like a, a Mercury multi-cylinder boat engine. Alright, power on. Power on. And crank. crank. Come on. Oh, now we got something. Come on. Come on, light off, light off, light off. Come on, you can do it. Here it comes, here it comes. Here it comes. All right, give it a break, and I give it a rest. We don't want to overheat it. But that's all, all good signs. I smell a little bit of bad gas. All right, we're going to try again. What happened is we had loose battery connection, of all things. Simple as that. All right. Go ahead and turn it on. On. And crank. Come on, come on, come on. To bet that's what it was good turn it off but she's running and she sounds good it sounds like it's not firing on all four cylinders it sounds like it's running on about three but it's probably um valves need adjusting or spark plug is dirty fried or one of these wires is off or ripped apart or something something minor i'm sure it almost always is but i believe in this thing this thing sounds good it sounds good i didn't hear any weird squeals no, no pounding or Knocking or yeah, it just this is great. <laughs> All right, well we're gonna um, you know what are we gonna do? Uh, maybe I'll juice it and crank it one more time. Maybe the other cylinder will light off. Sometimes just from sitting a little while, it just takes a little bit for it to go. But uh, this is all great. I don't know if the timing is right. Once again, I'm gonna have to check it. The fact that the points were closed up tells me that somebody didn't know what they were doing anyway. So it's pretty safe to assume the timing was wrong. It's also the wrong distributor. This is a 009. It should be a 034 uh, SVDA. The uh, single vacuum dual advanced distributor. I hate these things. These things don't advance properly with a carburetor. But, and whoever owned this thing, in respect to them, they did put the little rubber gogies covering all the little vacuum lines where the distributor would normally attach to. So they did do the right thing even though they put the wrong distributor up. Uh, could also have a vacuum leak over here. That could be a lot of little things stuff to go through, but the fact is this engine does run. I'm going to juice it again, just a little bit. Let's see if we can get it to uh, maintain running. It looks like with how it was running that it did get gas from the gas tank. This tells me the lines are probably clear. It's a good sign. All right, is it off? Yep. Go ahead and turn it on and crank. It's on and cranking. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks like it's out of gas. Turn off. Yep, turn off. She's off. Looks like it's out of gas. It's not getting fuel for some reason. Either the fuel pump isn't working right or there's just not enough gas in the tank from what we put in there. Alright, well thank you everybody for watching. We're going to stick a pin in it at the second because you guys saw a crank, we saw a run. We're having a small problem with fuel delivery or maybe it's just the fact that there's still some old fuel in the liner in the carburetor. I wouldn't be least bit surprised if the carburetor has some just junk in the jet. But nonetheless, we got it to fire up. We got the thing to run. But it is having problems cranking over, so the solenoid appears to be sticking. Now, I'm not either going to need a um, hot start relay, and you guys have seen me install that in another video. If you haven't seen that, you know, do a search for it on YouTube. With my name, hot start relay, you'll find it. There'll also be a link down below in the video description. But we're going to replace the starter and the solenoid. We're going to clean out the carburetor and figure out why it appears to be running on only three cylinders. So we'll adjust the valves and a few other things on it. But all in all, for a 30-year-old engine, it runs. And it runs good. This thing runs great. Future plans for this car, we're going to talk about in another video. Not in this one, unfortunately, you guys. But uh, thanks for watching us through this one. It was just, um, it was quite an adventure to uh, to see this old engine running after, I don't know, how much time we put it? About an hour? Maybe. About an hour we have into it, and it's already running. But that's air-cooled Volkswagens for you. Just, you can't beat the simplicity. These things are just excellent. Anyways, as always, link it, like it, comment, subscribe. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links, as well as B's social media links and her Patreon. That's right. Support her. Support me. Support us. You'll find the links up on DuckShit.net. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time.